So I'm starting to get a lifter tick. I have Johnson 2116 LSR lifters. I have uh, Manton push rods. I had to get custom push rods. And I'm tearing this down to figure out which uh, lifters have extra lash in them. Okay, so I have to check the valve lash on my valves. I just built this as an LQ9. I bought the camshaft and the springs from Roger Vinci. I bought two 116 LSR, I believe that's the number, uh, Johnson lifters. And uh, because of that, I had to order custom push rods through Manton push rods. And after so many miles, you have to look and see how the lifters broke in and if there's any more valve lash than when you installed them. So I'm at that point, I have to remove all of the push rods or do it one by one and measure their, uh, measure the, the lash when there's no slack in the uh, system. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, well the advisable way to do it is when you have check springs installed and you have the engine on a engine um, stand. However, I don't have all that uh, luxury. So somebody recommended MS Racing Components and uh, I ordered this this uh, valve lash checking tool. We're gonna use this, I'm gonna show you how it works. Another thing that's extremely important is you have a good micrometer. So I ordered this, it has to go up to 7.6 inches. I think standard uh, length of push rods is 7.4, but mine are longer because I have those fancy lifters in there. It's been, I don't know, I think this is 150 bucks or something, but last time I got one from Harbor Freight and I got what I paid for all my valve rods uh, valve push push rods were uh, measured incorrectly, but thankfully uh, they, they still worked. I have the valve cover taken off already as well as the spark plugs removed to hopefully reduce the compression a little bit. I didn't remove them from the other side. I'm not gonna lie, I'm learning a bit as I go with this stuff and I struggle a little bit with getting the valves on the heel of the cam, the shallowest part where both valves are closed. So what I did was I spun the crank and searched for the compression stroke when both valves are closed. Then I knew I was on the heel of the cam. So I'm gonna remove the push rod off the exhaust valve here. It's an eight millimeter socket. So here I'm doing parts inspection. Everything I take apart, I inspect to make sure there's nothing abnormal. I'm looking at the tips of the push rods, checking for burrs or any uh, grooves in it that I can feel with my finger. Then I look down it. I don't think I have that in the video to make sure that's still somewhat straight. I rolled it on a flat surface, so on and so forth. Um, another thing I did was I used a Sharpie marker. I don't know if you can see that here. And I tested all the wearing parts. So. This part that's cup, uh, that mates with the lifter and the part that mates with the rocker arm. I just installed everything again, uh, having painted it with a Sharpie marker, turned it over multiple times, and saw what the wear patterns look like. Now, I think one of the more critical wear patterns, well, two of them are the rocker arm tip to the... Um, valve tip of the valve and we'll get into that later on but the uh what i'll talk about right now is the rocker arm cup to the push rod you want that i think correct me if i'm wrong to not be all the way over the cup uh all the way over the end of the push rod but kind of on the shoulder more or less resting there and then um a it, it will be a little bit uh ecliptic on the ends where the rocker arm uh, moves back and forth because it just so slightly uh, changes its orientation as the uh, rocker arm goes up and down. Here I ran into a problem with the rocker arm and we'll get into that in just a bit, but it really set my project back. What you're looking at here is the more popular or the less expensive bronze trunnion rebuild kit that I used and it, uh, it wore out. So this is the valve lash checker tool. It has a little uh, top on it that has a spring and then you tighten this and it'll give you the length of zero lash where there's no slack in the valve. 
Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in here. We're going to make sure it seats on the top of the lifter. It should be right there. Uh, let's, I think, yep. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the uh, rocker arm. So all the slack is out and just in the, to be completely thorough, I'm just going to go a little bit more. I think these tighten to a relatively low torque number. You can look that up. Not going to go into that level of detail here. And then you tighten this little set screw in here. I'm going to tighten that screw real quick here, that, that locking nut on the testing tool. Not a lot of room to play with, but you, you get the point. You put this Allen key in there and you, you uh, spin it till it locks the, the length of the push rod, the checker. So we're learning together here. I found out that if I remove the rocker arm next to the one I'm testing the push rod length for, it's easier to use that tool. And another thing I did additionally is I got my index finger under the adjustment nut and helped make sure that by tightening that Allen key, I wasn't influencing the lifter cup at all. I was lifting that uh, tool into the seat of the rocker arm cup. I hope that makes sense. Just put your finger, your index finger underneath the adjustment nut. It also helps you guide in the um, Allen key a little easier. Once you get the hang of this, you get a rhythm down, it's very easy to do this. So at this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that uh, push rod length checker tool out after you have set the locking screw so that just the length won't uh, change. Then you go over and check the length with your micrometer. Mine's an eight inch mitayuto. Uh, I probably say that wrong micrometer and I'm writing it down on a paper here and right now I have a problem with my current configuration. I'm troubleshooting and we'll get into that in a bit. When, when I'm doing this, I notice first uh, my uh, length of my zero lash and my push rod are the exact same. So I have zero preload and I should have 30 thousandths. I've just measured uh, the exhaust on cylinder two. I have a good 10 thousandths isn't the most accurate way to test this. 10, 11 thousandths of uh, play in this bushing here, this brass bushing. And it's very noticeable, even if I'm just holding it. I don't think that's good. I mean, I can feel it rocking, wiggling, and you know, so in the next video, I'm going to show you exactly what happened here and how it, you can avoid that from happening on your engine builds.